I'd like to have a little chat with you today and talk a little bit about what's going on down in South America in uh, Venezuela and uh, all the uh, turmoil down there and all the unrest. It's a very interesting scripture, of course, Daniel chapter 8 and verse 9 says that uh, the little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land saying that the Antichrist, the little horn, as he rises up and grows in power, will reach out and uh, grow in power toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. The pleasant land, of course, being the promised land. Now, why does uh, it say south uh, first? Uh, maybe that's insignificant, but maybe there's some significance there. Maybe uh, the Antichrist begins his uh, conquest. The Bible says he will conquer. He will conquer and go out conquering and to conquer. He is the, uh, the rider on the white horse talked about in Revelation 6 verse 2. Uh, he is a conqueror who is going to go out making war against uh, many. The Bible says that he will cause astounding devastation. He will destroy wonderfully, the Bible says. So he's going to be a warmonger who's going to begin his conquest. And I want to talk about some of that. And uh, for all we know, maybe it will begin toward the south, as the scripture says, uh, toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land, which is the promised land. Uh, the Antichrist is going to begin his conquest, and uh, perhaps it will begin. Uh, it is mentioned first toward the south, so maybe that's where it begins, toward the south. So I want to talk a little bit about this, because uh, there's no question about it that the United States of America, the American Empire, has long wanted to uh, see the overthrow of uh, many governments, to the south, such as Cuba, of course, Nicaragua, uh, Venezuela, uh, Bolivia. Uh, there are many nations uh, that are really ripe for the picking for, a, for an American uh, dictator who wants to go out conquering and to conquer. So I want to talk a little bit about Venezuela with you today. But before I get into that, I, I want to share this uh, personal uh, note with you. Uh, many of you have sent us prayer requests and uh, we've been praying for you. And I thank every one of you that uh, reads the comments and you read about how people are asking for prayer and you pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And thank you for praying. And we're also hearing prayer uh praise reports about answered prayer, how God is answering prayer for you. And some of you are sending comments telling us about how God has been answering your prayers. And you know that that uh, it is also uh, the, the prayers of your brothers and sisters that God is hearing too. And you're thankful for those prayers. And you've expressed your thanks for those that are praying and for you and for your prayer requests. And so that's a wonderful thing. I thank God for that sweet fellowship that we're having on this channel, uh, praying for one another. And uh, with that in mind, I want to ask you to please be praying for me and my wife, Judy. Uh, we, of course, we're all getting older every day. And we all, I think most of us, uh, as we get older, we have our health issues. And uh, my wife has her health issues, and I have my health issues. And uh, we do ask you to please remember Judy and me in your prayers. Uh, we need your prayers. Uh, I, I have not always been feeling great <laughs> lately. I am fasting, and uh, I'm uh, praying and uh, asking God to help uh, my wife Judy and me uh, to carry on and uh, to uh, do that, of course, we've got to be in good health. Uh, when people are not in good health, it, it makes it very difficult to, to do the things that we, we pray that we'll be able to do. And in these last days, you know, I, I'm hoping to continue on and carry on. Uh, but I need healing. And uh, my wife, Judy, 
needs healing. We need, we need your prayers. And so I'm asking you to please pray for us that God will let these uh, health issues be behind us and that we can, that way we can go on forward with more vigor and more strength and uh, carry on. And uh, you know where I'm coming from. Uh, as we all are growing older, many of you also share your prayer requests and asking for prayers for your health. And believe me, Judy and I are praying for you and we want you to know that. Be assured that we are praying for you. We love you. and. Uh, we consider this fellowship such a blessing to us all. What a, what a blessing that we have uh, brothers and sisters in Christ that care for one another and pray for one another. And I love you very much. And, and my wife, Judy, feels the same way. Now, what I'd really like to get into today is just touching a little bit about uh, the possibility here of what's happening in Venezuela and South America. Now, I don't want anyone, please don't misunderstand me on this either. I am definitely not making any predictions about what's going to happen. God only knows what's going to happen in Venezuela. Uh, as we see right now, uh, things are really on the, on a, uh, at a crossroads where it could just go one way or the other. Uh, this Maduro, he may decide to uh, resign and flee and, and go to some other country and, uh, and uh, escape uh, any more conflict. We don't know. If he does that, then uh, it will uh, probably be resolved in a more peaceful way. But on the other hand, uh, he has the support of the military. And right now, as of this time while I'm speaking, he, he seems to be digging in with his military to hold on to power. And meanwhile, uh, the, these countries all over the world are recognizing a new uh, leader for Venezuela, the interim uh, president, he's calling himself, uh, Juan Guaido. Uh, he, has, he has declared himself the new president. So you could call this a coup. Uh, those that love him and are in favor of this would, would say that it's the takeover by a legitimate government taking over from an illegitimate government. I mean, it all depends on your point of view, how you're going to look at this. And uh, you know, those of you that follow this channel, I do not uh, take sides as far as socialism versus communism or capitalism or all of these isms. Uh, I believe that all of these isms are vain philosophies. There is no hope in any of them. Only Jesus Christ is going to save a lost world. There's no other hope. There's no other answer. There's no other uh, salvation. Uh, all of these isms are vain philosophies, and uh, they're all failing all over the world. Uh, communism is failing everywhere. Uh, capitalism is failing everywhere. Let's face it, in the United States of America, where we're seeing uh, the most ungodly uh, kind of uh, result of capitalism at this point in time, we're seeing billionaires becoming multi, multi, multi billionaires. And we're seeing the, the poor getting poorer. The middle class is becoming the lower class. And uh, the rich just keep getting filthy, filthy rich uh, because it, it doesn't work. You know, no matter what these isms are, uh, communism doesn't work. Uh, capitalism doesn't work. There, it just doesn't work. It doesn't pan out in the end. It won't save. Uh, when we all get to heaven, there's going to be people that are on all these sides with all of these isms that are uh, going to uh, face Judgment Day. And uh, when we all stand before the Lord, uh, the, all of these isms are going to be proven that they did not save anybody. And so I just want to talk a little bit about how, though, that uh, uh, the American empire uh, is the uh, empire that uh, the really the ism <laughs> that is dominant right now for America is imperialism. Uh, the idea that uh, America really is the one to tell the world what is going to happen and way it, the way it should be. 
the uh, the world empire that is forming the bible says that in the last days there will be a one world government ruled by one dictator the antichrist on this channel we believe that that man is donald trump many people send me comments saying oh no it couldn't be him for this and that and the other I have answered your objections in my videos. If you'll simply look into it, I know that many of you you uh, will say, "Oh, you haven't answered this one. You haven't answered that one." I all I can say is I've been doing this now for years, and I've I, I'm not hearing anything new. All of the objections that I'm hearing are not new. I've heard them all many times, and I've answered them in my videos. And if you'll just look into what I've put on into my videos. Uh, go to my website and look at my videos that are featured. Go to my channel and look at the videos that are featured on my channel. If you'll do that, you'll find that I have dealt with these issues that you're raising, saying that he can't be. Donald Trump fits the bill. He fills the bill. Uh, all of the Bible prophecies are fulfilled in Donald Trump. And uh, like I say, I know many of you disagree with me. But I will just say this, if you do disagree with me and you and you claim to be a Christian, disagree with me in love. You don't have to keep sending me these hate comments and calling me an idiot and a moron. I'm not calling you an idiot or a moron because you disagree with me. And you don't have to call me that because you disagree with me. I believe what I believe uh, the Bible teaches. And I'm teaching that on this channel. And that's what this channel is uh, about. We're talking about Bible prophecy and what we believe the Bible says. And that's what we believe here. And uh, so we're talking in the, on this channel about the coming Antichrist as he is rising to power. Donald Trump as he is rising to power. And we're talking about the coming false prophet, which we believe will be a future pope. Pope Sixtus the Sixth. I name him because I believe that he will take that name. And so uh, this is what we believe on this channel. And we, we've been talking about these things that are coming. Now the Bible says, again, like I say, that the Antichrist is going to rise to power toward the south, toward the east, and toward the promised land. The south is mentioned first, maybe for a reason, maybe not. But maybe God put that in there first for a reason, toward the south. Maybe because that's where it's going to begin. Again, I'm not making any predictions about what's going to happen in Venezuela. But I do know this, that for years and years, uh, since Hugo Chavez took over in Venezuela, the American empire has wanted to see the downfall of that government in Venezuela. Hugo Chavez came to power as a, as a communist or a socialist, whatever you want to call it. He came to power and... Uh, implemented uh, those kinds of policies and and uh, rebelled against the United States and uh, said to the American Empire you're not going to tell us what to do down here and immediately the American Empire set out to destroy Hugo Chavez the American Empire is spread out all over the world and this is where the New World Order is going to originate and how it's going to develop over time beginning with the American Empire and the American Empire uh, has fortresses all over the world. The Bible says that the Antichrist, the God of the Antichrist is the God of fortresses and uh, the God of forces. And uh, that, uh, that is the, the God of this world, the devil, who uh, has, uh, is all about war and destruction, killing. The Bible says the devil comes to kill and destroy. And that's what the devil's all about. And uh, the, the American Empire has put uh, fortresses all over this planet and rules this world. Uh, if you doubt that, just look at how uh, China is surrounded by American military bases. Look at how Russia is surrounded by American military bases. If you'll just do the research, you'll see that there is no other superpower in this world. America rules this world. And uh, all the talk about China and Russia being so powerful and so strong, there's no comparison with the American Empire. And the American Empire is thrusting its will upon the world. 
And uh, there's no other power that can stand against this growing American empire. Donald Trump is building it up, building it up, building it up all the time. Uh, he's building up this military. He's building up the army. He's building up the Navy. He's building up the Air Force. The, they are building ships. They are building planes. They are building fighter jets. They are building and building and building. Uh, more and more units, more and more fortresses around the world, more and more forts. Uh, you may have seen this in the news. Poland is even asking uh, that the United States build a fort in, in uh, Poland and name it. They want to name that fort Fort Donald Trump. Believe it or not, the leader of Poland has said that. He wants it to be called Fort Donald Trump. Yeah, in Poland. Uh, this is what's happening in this world today. The, the American empire continues to grow and grow and grow, but most people don't even know about it. How many of you have heard about that? <laughs> that Poland wants to build a, a fort called Fort Donald Trump. It's not in the news. Why? We're just not hearing about these things. The, this American empire is growing and growing and growing. And so uh, this is where the, the world empire is uh, is going to come from the the world empire ruled by the antichrist is the american empire it is the new roman empire the revived roman empire and continues to grow in power uh one of you just sent me a comment and my wife uh, also saw this uh, yesterday uh that they are now already in production we find in texas uh, there are they are already producing these low level nukes that Trump has been asking for. Uh, when Trump came into the presidency, the first thing he wanted to do was to upgrade the nuclear weapons and to make them more powerful and more up to date and to build low level nuclear weapons that can be used more strategically, tactically to uh, hit a target. And, and uh, that target would be a, sm uh, a smaller uh, target. In other words, let's say they want to, that Trump decides he wants to destroy a city like Caracas or uh, some city uh, like uh, Pyongyang. Uh, if he decided to do that, he would have a weapon that could destroy, pinpoint and hit that city and destroy that city. And the radiation would be... Uh, lower level there would be it would be a lower level nuclear strike that would not be so devastating to the whole countryside but instead would just pinpoint that particular city and the the radiation would pretty much stay within the city so that he could hit a city a, a specific target with a nuclear weapon on a lower level and uh to, in order to uh, actually use nuclear weapons in a conventional war, which, which is uh, something no other person ever thought of doing before. I mean, actually using nuclear weapons in a conventional war. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what Trump wants. And that's what he's getting right now. They're already starting the production of these, these uh, low-level nuclear weapons. Uh, my wife saw this yesterday, uh, looking in, at an article in Defense News, and somebody sent me a, an article about it today, where other outlets are starting to pick up the story and carry it. And uh, so this is what's happening. Uh, the the American Empire is continuing to grow. The military is continuing to grow. These things are happening, and uh, and so right now. What's going on in Venezuela is there's a, a civil war, a civil conflict, and the United States, the American Empire, has been out to destroy uh, Venezuela for a long time. And uh, you may say, oh, no, it's socialism that brought that has brought down Venezuela. You know, I'm not going to argue with you that so I'm not defending socialism. As I say, I'm not defending any isms. I'm not saying that Maduro has been a good uh, leader. Uh, Hugo Chavez picked uh, Maduro, handpicked him as, as Hugo Chavez was dying. Uh, he picked Maduro to succeed him. And uh, they have had, and, and I'm, I definitely agree that Maduro is corrupt, their regime is corrupt. But the thing about it is the, the people that replaced them always are, are corrupt too. 
because there's no hope in these politicians. There's no hope in these so-called political movements that are going to rescue and save everybody. It never pans out. They always, there's always corruption and layer after layer of corruption. And, uh, and so uh, socialism, uh, I'm sure, failed Venezuela too. But in the meantime, <laughs> the, the American empire was working with businesses around the world working with financial firms around the world to put sanctions and pressure on the Venezuelan government so that it would collapse, so that the economy would collapse. And so the people are in the streets and they don't, the people that are protesting and, and just, they're hungry. They don't know about all of what America did or this business did or that entity did or this financial firm did. All they know is they're hungry and they can't get what they need. They're, they're in desperate straits. And so no one can blame them for wanting uh, change. They want a new government, of course. Uh, but the point is, uh, this has all been orchestrated. The American empire has uh, been working to bring them down and to bring them to this point. And so now uh, there is uh, this definitely a possibility that there could be a civil war if Maduro tries to hang on to power and this new government tries to take power uh, God knows what's going to happen John Bolton the national security advisor he had uh, on his tablet scrawled 5,000 troops to Colombia Colombia of course being a, a, a neighboring country to Venezuela and uh, so in other words the the administration is threatening to send troops down in there and and to uh, get involved in perhaps a military intervention to overthrow maduro and install this new government to get involved in this civil war and i think personally in my opinion uh bolton's notes were he meant for people to see that because he had held it in his hand where people could see it I think that they're trying to see how it will be uh, received by people, but also to send a threatening uh, message to Maduro that if he doesn't get out of there, the U.S. is coming in. And so it may happen. Uh, the United States of America may end up sending uh, the military down to uh, Venezuela and uh, it would it would not be difficult to do because Venezuela is right there on the northern coast of South America. So strategically, uh, you couldn't uh, ask for an easier country to hit in South in South America than Venezuela. And so uh, they could bring the military down upon uh, South America right there and uh, bring it into Venezuela. Uh, it would not be difficult, and uh, it would not be difficult, of course, for the American Empire, with all the might and power that it has, to to uh, go in and take a spoil, uh, to to settle that uh, civil war in order to uh, have its way in South America, in the northern country of Venezuela. That would be a good starting point uh, for for outreach in many directions. But uh, to take a spoil, the Bible says the Antichrist will take a spoil. He's going to rob the nations. He's going to take what he wants. Uh, Maduro is honest when he says, you know, the United States is just interested in our oil and our gas and our gold. Uh, they're interested in what we've got. And that's why the U.S. is so interested in this uh, thing that's happening in Venezuela. You know, why? what other interest is there, you know? They always say it's a humanitarian war uh, when they go in, you know, oh, we're going to rescue the poor people. Well, the American Empire is the one that, that brought about all this devastation in the first place. And so they're going to rescue them from what they did to them <laughs> to begin with. But that's what they always say, you know, oh, we're coming in to rescue the people. We're going to overthrow a bad, evil regime. Uh, even though they're allied, the American empire is allied with evil regimes all over the world. I mean, if you're going to start dealing with uh, bad guys, you know, you could start with Saudi Arabia, uh, which is, there's, there's none worse. But uh, nevertheless, this is the, always the storyline. So here's, here's the point I'm making is you're going to probably hear uh, 
I wouldn't be surprised you're going to start hearing Pompeo and Trump start uh, invoking the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine, of course, is is an, uh, an old doctrine uh, the United States has always had that that is a doctrine saying that the United States should have predominance in the Western Hemisphere. So everybody else needs to stay out. See, right now, Russia has had joint exercises with Maduro's government in Venezuela. The Russians have had joint exercise, military exercises with Maduro. And uh, there are Russian mercenaries right now in Venezuela. There are Russians in Venezuela helping Maduro. And so Russia is saying to the United States, stay out of this, you know. And uh, I think that uh, they're going to, Pompeo is going to invoke uh, the Monroe Doctrine and say, oh no, Russia, you need to stay out. You know, you're, you don't have any business in our hemisphere. This is our hemisphere, not yours, you know, so you need to get out. Of course, it doesn't matter <laughs> that the American empire has fortresses all over the world surrounding Russia, surrounding China, surrounding all countries. Uh, that that won't be brought up. What will be brought up is, is that uh, Russia just needs to stay out of uh, the United States' Western hemisphere. You know, this is our uh, this is our neighborhood, the United States is going to say, so you need to stay out of it. And so the hypocrisy is it's, uh, it's typical. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is we don't know. Now, like I say, I'm not predicting what's going to happen. This, this thing could uh, totally be diffused if Maduro simply gives up and uh, goes to another country or whatever. And uh, or if uh, something happens where uh, uh, the military turns against Maduro, if his military turns against him, then uh, he has nothing left. And uh, so that could happen. So I'm not predicting how this is going to come out. All I'm saying is the potential is there for uh, this to be something meaningful in uh, Bible prophecy. The potential is there. The Antichrist is going to, the Bible is clear on that, he's going to grow toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land, toward the land of Israel. He's going to grow in power toward the Middle East, toward the east and toward the south. And the south is mentioned first, so I'm just pointing that out, that this there, there is the potential there for this to amount to something. So we'll just have to keep our eye on this situation and see how it all pans out. We don't know how it's going to come out, but we do know that the Bible is true. And everything the Bible says is going to come to, to pass. The Lord didn't give us all the details. You know, I know sometimes we wish, oh, I wish I had more details. But the Lord gave us what we needed. If the Lord had given us all the details of every little thing that's going to happen in the future, the Lord couldn't have given us all of that information. If, if he had, it would overwhelm us. We would never get through the Bible and we would never know what the Bible says. So he gave us just what we needed and he gave us uh, enough so that we would have uh, just exactly what we needed and have the Holy Bible and uh, have everything that we need in this Bible to tell us what, what is essential. And what is most essential, I want to bring this up before I leave, <laughs> before I leave you here. Uh, the most essential thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the heart of the matter. And as I said earlier in this uh, video, all of the isms are not going to save anybody. There's, they're not going to do anything for anybody. <laughs> but the Lord Jesus is the one and only Savior. And if you will just put your faith in him, and trust in Jesus Christ, uh, give him your whole heart, then you are safe no matter what happens in these last days. You know, though the, as the Bible says, though the mountains be removed, you know, even though the whole world is shaken and everything is shaken, uh, you will be safe and secure. Uh, the Bible says plainly, uh, Jesus said, repent and believe the good news. Believe the gospel. Believe with all of your heart. Come to the Father, repent. That means to turn to God and say to him, Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I am guilty and I deserve eternal hell. I know I've sinned. I know I'm a sinner. 
I admit, the Bible says if you don't uh, admit that you're a sinner, then you're a liar, <laughs> and the truth is not in you. If you deny that you have sinned, the Bible is clear. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we all need forgiveness. And there's only one way to obtain God's forgiveness, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because in God's great love, he did not want anyone to be lost. And so he gave his son on the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save us if we will believe in him. Uh, that's what it's all about, believing in Jesus. So God says, repent and believe the gospel. Turn to God and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus that was poured out on the cross and save my soul. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I believe that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. I believe that Jesus is coming back to, to rescue and to, to make everything right in a world that cannot be saved by any of these isms. There is no hope in any of these isms or any of these vain philosophies. There's no hope in anyone or anything other than Jesus Christ alone.